Well, every summer we take some time to highlight an area city and what makes it unique. We call it Our Town. Tonight we begin over a week-long series showcasing Our Town Eau Claire. We'll take a look at what may lie ahead for the city and show you some positive aspects, as well as what could be done differently to make the community a better place to live. News Center 13, Selena Heller joins us now from the breathtaking vista on Upper Campus at UW Eau Claire with more. Selena? Judy, this, the Eau Claire community began as a lumbering settlement back in the 1840s. Then dairy farming replaced lumbering as the main economic activity. Now Eau Claire is the major center for industry, retail, technology, education, and health services for West Central Wisconsin. And it's all of these things that are keeping residents here and even attracting new ones. I asked city residents and leaders what they thought about the quality of life in Eau Claire. Um, I think about trees, you know, the, um, the parks, the, the people, everything is real friendly. It's a pretty big community, but yet everybody gets along pretty good. The jobs and the people and the fishing and the clean water. I think it's a, a nice, safe community. It's, it's a good place to raise kids. I mean, there's not a lot of crime. It's a place that over 60,000 people call home, and it seems for many reasons. With the tax dollars we, we, we do pay, uh, we have the best, best education system, I think, uh, anywhere. Uh, we have great services, city services, you know, fire police, uh, parks and recs. It, Everything's here. And while Eau Claire doesn't have a lot of crime in comparison with other larger cities, city officers say there are still challenges they face, perceptions of people. Sometimes, you know, they, they believe that it, Eau Claire is a perfect area and that bad things don't happen here. Um, and for the most part, they don't. But we do have to remember that if we allow them to happen, you know, and if we allow people to do these bad things, that that's where our problems lie. And Jeff Stads with the Convention and Visitors Bureau says city leaders shouldn't be content just because residents may be. He says we should always be looking for ways to improve our quality of life. I think we need to be forward thinking on, on what else can we do to, to, to make it even better. And I think if we keep that mentality, I think it'll, it will be better. A couple of things that Stodd says could improve the quality of life in the Chippewa Valley and Eau Claire specifically is a convention center and a high-speed rail system. He says it's these kinds of things that will bring people and attract more people to the area, the city of Eau Claire, and even help improve the quality of life for those already here. Judy? Thank you, Selena, for that report. When we come back, we'll talk with one of Eau Claire's elected officials and find out how he intends to ensure the city's quality of life. We'll be back with more of Our Town Eau Claire after this. The city of Eau Claire has come a long way from the days of a logging town to a major center of retail, health care, and education. And as we found out a few minutes ago, the city's quality of life is a major aspect of not only bringing people here, but making them stay. Joining us now to tell us how city leaders help in that regard is Eau Claire City Council President Bill Nielsen. Thanks for joining us tonight, Bill. Judy, it's a pleasure to be with you this evening. First of all, I'd like to ask you the question Selena asked in her piece. What do you think of when someone mentions Eau Claire's quality of life? You know, there's a lot of things that uh, draw people to, to Eau Claire. Uh, I'm a perfect example. Uh, when my wife was looking for a job in the uh, early 80s, we picked Eau Claire of all the places uh, we could have moved to. A lot of things are uh, the quality of the schools here in Eau Claire, uh, the recreational uh, opportunities, and then, of course, uh, the economic uh, uh, opportunities as well are uh, important factors. As the city's top elected official, what do you think uh, or what do you feel your job is to ensure a good quality of life here from a government standpoint? Well, I've had uh, two different roles in the council. I've been a district rep and I've also now served, this is my fourth year as uh, city council president. As council president, I have a much more active role in economic development. So we've been actively involved in uh, uh, attracting quality industry and, and good paying jobs to the Chippewa Valley. That's a real vital role and I have a lot of help in our economic development uh, department with Mike Schatz and the entire city council is uh, behind that effort. How important is uh, the quality of life in attracting business to Eau Claire? It's, it's um, paramount. Uh, right now people are looking for communities very similar to Eau Claire in the 50 to 100,000 uh, range uh, within uh, convenient travel distances to major metropolitan areas. So demographically, we're benefiting by uh, what's happening on a national basis. How, how does the city's 
growth play into ensuring a good quality of life? How do you keep the city's you know, quality from, from eroding as the city grows? What, what we try to do is we try to have a, a slow, continual growth, and we've experienced that over the past 10 years. Uh, any city that's uh, vibrant, vital, and uh, is experiencing good economic times is going to grow. We've had approximately between 1% and a 2% population growth per year over the last decade, and that's a good uh, target for a, a good sustained growth rate. All right. It was mentioned in Selena's story that improved transportation in the city and a possible convention center might help with the city's uh, quality of life in, in the future. Do you agree with that or what, what can be done? I, uh, I know the um, uh, high-speed rail initiative is uh, a high priority uh, with the Chamber of Commerce and it's, uh, I, I attended the public hearing that was held here in Eau Claire and spoke in support of uh, studying the route that would uh, place that corridor through Eau Claire. That would be a major boost to this area. I was involved in the last um, study of the convention center arena complex that was in the downtown area and there's presently a, an effort uh, that's headed by the county to uh, take another look at that issue. And I, I really hope that it's successful. I think it'll take a cooperative effort between the county, the city, and maybe a regional effort to uh, ensure that that's a success. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Bill Nielsen, for joining us this evening. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Judy. Up next, John Jetta rejoins us from downtown Eau Claire with a look at that weekend weather forecast, plus Mr. Food when we come back. Since you already have the grill going, Mr. Food says you can keep it going and make dessert as well. Nothing says summertime more than backyard barbecues and banana splits. Well, if we could combine both of them, we'd come out with a double winner. Watch how we can do just that. In a 9 by 13 baking dish, we combine a stick of melted butter and a half cup of brown sugar. Now we place six firm bananas that we've cut in half lengthwise into the mixture and we brush them well, you know, until they're coated completely. Then onto a preheated medium grill they go, flat side down for four or five minutes at most till the edges begin to bubble. Then we turn them, give them two minutes more till they're lightly browned. And now what we do is we place two halves each into an ice cream dish and then we top them with scoops of vanilla ice cream. And sure enough, we've got a grilled banana split. Now, of course, since there are no rules, we can dress our split up any way we like. Well, maybe heat some hot fudge sauce in an aluminum container on the grill and drizzle that over them. For crunch, sprinkle on some crushed peanut brittle or put out the usuals, you know, and let the gang go to town their very own favorite way. Look, if you'd like the recipe, you just send a self-addressed stamped envelope marked grilled banana split to me, Mr. Food, back at the station, and we'll get it back to you for having them go bananas for two summer favorites rolled into one. Now look, some like it hot, some like it cold, but when we please them all, we're everybody's favorite. Oh, it's so good. If you'd like a copy of today's recipe, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to WEAU-TV, P.O. Box 47, or pick up a copy at Pick and Save Eau Claire in Chippewa Falls. Pat Kreitlow joins us now from the newsroom with a look at what's coming up on News Center 13 at 6. Pat. Judy, our look at our town Eau Claire continues at 6 with a focus on a specific part of that quality of life that so many people cite as a reason for calling Eau Claire their home. We're talking about parks, maintaining the ones we've got now, and planning ahead for the parkland needs of the future. We'll get a report from Scott Beatty and a live interview with Parks and Rec Director Ken Van Ness, both at Carson Park. Plus, we'll have the Friday Top Ten. We will also look ahead to the preseason opener of the Green Bay Packers tonight, taking on the New York Jets at Lambeau Field. All that and more at 6. Judy. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for joining us at 5, everyone. We hope you have a nice evening and a great weekend. Here's NBC Nightly News.